Hello everyone, my name is Ines Ashtekovic from TU Graz. I am very pleased to introduce you to our paper Montefloor, extending MCTS for reconstructing accurate large-scale floor plans. This is a joint work with Madirat and supervised by Friedrich Fraundorfer and Vincent Le Petit. In this talk, we are going to focus on the task of reconstructing floor plans from point cloud data. It is an important problem in 3D scene understanding with numerous applications in fields of robotics and augmented reality, for example. However, this task is far from being solved as it is quite challenging to extract complex structural elements, especially in clutter settings. Typically, this results in methods using heavy heuristics, which limits the generalization aspect. We believe that the method we developed is very general and that it could be also extended to many other problems in seed understanding, so please stay tuned. Like previous work, we reproject the input point cloud into top view to obtain a density map, which is the actual input into our method that estimates the floor plan in 2D. FlorSP is the state-of-the-art method in this field. From detected room instances, FlorSP assumes all detections are correct, and rather than reconstructing rooms jointly, it reconstructs them one by one. We wonder if we can pose floor plan estimation as a combinatorial problem. Having many proposed rooms in mind that potentially fit the input density map, what is the best subset we should select? All rooms must fit together, and their shapes can be optimized jointly to improve the fit. Complexity grows rapidly as the number of proposed rooms increases, which is a big issue, especially when we consider the aspect of potential optimization. As we need an efficient search algorithm, we pose the following question. Can we use MCTS to find the solution efficiently? It has been used for the difficult game of Go that is well known for its combinatorial explosion of possible board positions. If we can somehow apply MCTS to our problem and adapt it to perform optimization, it will be a perfect fit. In the game of Go, MCTS selects moves to find paths to victories. Victory can also mean maximizing some very general score. Now, if we consider our floor plan reconstruction as a game, what would be the score? Also, how do we define the move? First thing to notice is that we play a single player game, so we do not have any opponents. For the scoring function, we can evaluate how well our solution fits to the input density map. If we have a large pool of room proposals, then a single move can mean taking a single proposal out of this pool and adding it into the scene. This is how our proposal selection game works, except for the optimization step, which is still missing. In a similar way, we can formulate many tasks in scene understanding as a proposal selection game, such as a room layout estimation game, object detection game, CAD model retrieval game, or many other games. Our general algorithm jointly solves proposal selection and refinement. In this work, we apply it to the floor plan reconstruction task and we call the resulting method Montefloor. We demonstrate that Montefloor iteratively reconstructs complex floor plans without heuristics. We show this in our animation and observe how quality of reconstruction consistently improves through iterations, taking into account not only individual quality, but also fitness between selected rooms and the global reconstruction quality. We believe other search algorithms are only suboptimal for our setting. In contrast to graph search, MCTS performs evaluations at leaf nodes, so we can apply very general objective functions. Hill climbing is greedy, while MCTS performs stochastic search, which helps to avoid local minima. In contrast to beam search, MCTS can be applied to high state complexity problems. In our previous work, we already applied MCTS to a large set of candidate objects and most proposals to retrieve appealing CAD representation of the input RGBD scan. We believe the quality of the optimal proposals could be further refined using insights from our new work. In this slide, we show the initial stage of our pipeline. We start by segmenting room instances similarly to the FlorSP method. After generating room instances in our proposal selection game, 
we first generate a pool of room proposals by fitting polygons of different complexities to the silhouettes of individual room segments. Our pool can be very large as the complexity increases with number of detected rooms. Hence, we would like to efficiently find and refine the optimal set of proposals. We observed that in this example, the encircled room was falsely detected, and therefore the optimal solution should discard all proposals corresponding to this detection. Hence, we also generate an empty proposal for each of the detected rooms. For our proposal selection game, we would like to select the optimal subset of proposals P that minimizes our objective function. It measures fitness of the selected proposals to the input scene, taking into account compatibility of selected proposals and some prior knowledge, but more on this later. We illustrate a partially built room tree for an input scene. Indeed, MCTS builds the tree online and starting from the root node, so the tree is not fully built even after the search. In our floor plan estimation setting, each level of the tree consists of proposals corresponding to a single room. Hence, every path from the root to the leaf represents a valid solution that selects proposals traversed in this path. Finally, the set of selected proposals can be rendered into the scene and evaluated using our objective function. Standard MCTS iteration follows select, expand, simulate, and update principle. In this example, from a late MCTS iteration, selection phase traverses current tree starting from the root node by relying on selection criteria. As we associate each node with some score, selection will focus on the nodes that were most promising in previous iterations, taking into account the exploration aspect. We talk about score assignment in the update phase. As the tree is built online, we will encounter situations where the nodes are not initialized yet, and we call such nodes the new nodes. We always prioritize such new nodes over existing ones, and we immediately start the initialization in the expansion phase. The score for the new node is still unknown. If we were to evaluate the new node on its own, we would not be able to understand how it fits in terms of global context. Hence, in the simulation phase, we pick some proposals by randomly simulating paths in the subtree to make the score assignment more reliable. At this stage and before performing update, we introduce our novel refinement phase that optimizes selected proposals. More exactly, we perform a gradient descent step on the polygon vertices of selected proposals by first rendering them into the scene and second, applying our objective function that evaluates the quality of the rendered solution. Finally, in the update phase, we also use our objective function to update scores of not only the new node, but also previously initialized nodes along the traverse path. At this stage, iteration is finished and the new iteration starts following the same principles, but applying the insights from the last iteration during the selection phase. After desired number of iterations, we perform inference and simply traverse the tree from the root to the leaf, selecting nodes with high score along the path. In this slide, we define our objective function that is used during refinement and update phases. To assess quality of proposed floor plans, we train a metric network. Given the input density map and the rendered floor plan, the metric network is trained to predict some target metrics. In our case, we use intersection over union. The objective is further regularized by penalizing unlikely angles between edges of individual polygons and by penalizing disconnected or overlapping rooms. To render a closed polygon, we need to determine whether a 2D point is inside this polygon. The winding algorithm can determine this by summing angles between the point and all polygon edges. If the sum is 360 degrees, it is inside the polygon. If it is zero, it is outside. This is a non-differentiable step function. To enable the refinement step, our novel adaptation of winding algorithm softens the transition, making the algorithm differentiable. Multiple polygons can be rendered together 
by simply summing individual renderings. In this slide, we show progress of our method through iterations. In the top left example, we observe how our approach performs on a Manhattan scene. In the later iterations, we can best observe the effects of the refinement step. In the second example below, we observe we are able to reconstruct complex non-Manhattan scenes as well. In the later iterations, we observe how proposals get gradually connected and that right angles are not strictly enforced. For the upper example on the right, we will see false positives in the encircled regions that slowly disappear in the final solution. We observe similar in the lower right example. In the end, we get a really good fit for all of these examples. In our quantitative experiments, we use several reconstruction metrics. We perform better on all metrics compared to the competing floor SP method on the structured 3D dataset and we also perform better on the floor SP test set. As we claim that our approach is general, it would be a shame if we close our presentation without these results. Here's a first public teaser of our 3D room layout estimation method that we built using insights from this work. In early iterations, the method discovers promising proposals. Then, for the rest of iterations, it starts focusing and refining most promising solutions. We observe how wall edges slowly start to align to the edges in the input image and how the structure remains intact during the whole refinement process. Thank you very much for your kind attention.